Hi, welcome to an Essentials Overview. I'm really excited to do this for you. I've been wanting to do it for years. This is my favorite um, component of the, of the Classical Conversations journey because it's the one environment where parents and students learn and grow together, have dialectic conversations over words. So I'm going to show you what I do to kick off my classes each year. And we're going to get started there. So the word, word, is a very powerful word in itself. It's one of the names used to describe Christ, the word made flesh and dwelt among us, right? Um, God spoke the world into existence. Words have a level of importance beyond what you and I can even comprehend. And the Latin word we learn in foundations for word is verbum. And I ask the kids all the time, okay, do you see another word within this word? And of course, second and third year students and some first year students shout out verb. And I say, well, what do I always say about verbs? And usually one will answer this question or a mom. But if they don't, I'll tell them verbs are the life of a sentence. Because if I were talking about Ellie, the dog, and I just said, Ellie, the dog, doesn't go anywhere. If I add a verb, Ellie the dog barked at the neighbor at the door, <laughs> comma, which is why she's with me in this video. <laughs> All of a sudden, you got some life about Ellie, right? And what I think is amazing is that our words have life and creative force. And so I, I like to encourage all of the parents and students to be very careful with our words because we produce life and confidence or we produce death and discouragement. And so this is a judgment-free zone. And if you're going to tune in throughout the year, just know there is no judgment in essentials. Andrew Poudois says often that we are not judging writing. We're not creating a good piece of writing. We are um, inspiring great writers. So it's about who you are. So speaking of who you are, I put some names on the board that I happen to know the meaning of because they're mine and my children's. The name Amy with a Y means beloved. Amy with an I is French and it means friend. So I can only hope to live up to that meaning as beloved friend. My middle name is Christina and the name Christina means follower of Christ. When I was a little girl and people said, what's your name? I would say, Amy Christina Sandstrom, beloved little follower of the Lord. It was just, it came out my mouth. It was an identity. And I knew when I had my own children, I wanted them to know who they were and whose they were. And Jeffrey, my son, Jeffrey means divine peace. And he is, he carries peace to every situation and every environment. If you know him, I think you would agree. Michael was the name of my husband, means who is like the Lord. It's also the middle name of Jeffrey. So divine peace who is like the Lord is my son. And my husband's middle name was Robert. And so who is like the Lord and famed one created his name. Sadie comes from Sadie and Eleanor, which we sandwiched together to make Sadie Ella. And those two names together mean princess who is brighter than the sun. And Janine is her middle name after my lovely great aunt, and it means full of grace and mercy. So I like to do this with my students, and I, if they know the meaning of their name, I like to put them on the board because the truth of it is, every time I say Jeffrey, I'm actually speaking divine peace, divine peace, divine peace. When I say Sadiella, I'm speaking Princess who is brighter than the sun. Every time I say that word, because that's what it means, and that's the life in that inside that word's meaning. So imagine if you're taking verbs and taking something as precious as who is brighter than the sun, and then activating that with a positive life-filling verb. Now we're getting somewhere. So I tell the class, this whole journey of essentials, parents too, it is a journey, like you need to take three tours to really grasp all of this information. It might be overwhelming, you might wanna quit, but if we have a whole room full of 
beloved friends who are followers of Jesus, who are full of peace and who are like the Lord, strong and mighty and in power and who are brighter than the sun and full of grace and mercy, do you think that we could accomplish this difficult task? Yes. The answer undeniably is yes. So I set that up every year just to inspire all of us and to re-inspire and ignite me that our words carry great force. So if you're ever feeling discouraged, please send your questions of, oh, we're in this lesson and I don't know what to do with it. What can I do? And we will do our best to speak life into you, okay? So here's how my class, my board every week, has the EEL where we're headed, it's kind of a map of the day. And then on the other side, I have the writing portion. And I just wanna tell you, every parent has what every tutor has. So out of the EEL scope and sequence, which is in your essentials guide, and your director should have given you one of these layouts of where your community is heading for your 24 weeks. All I do is take the top line or whatever week we're on, which week one happens to be the top line, and this information is exactly word for word what's on that top line. So I let my parents know to be prepared for class. Here's what you need to do as a parent. You need to read the week's lesson so they can take their big Mama Jamma, you know, essentials guide and just read, skim over lesson one before class. It could be the night before even. They don't need to understand it all and know it all. Just be familiar with it. And then for the writing portion, if they just take Andrew Pudua's unit, unit one and unit two is where we start, right? Just read it over. We'll talk about it in class. Get it in your head. Get it once through you're good to go. Students need to come to class. We create student binders and I'll show you in another video what we put in our student binders because I like for them to have a lot of material that they get to play with and I get to tell them basically I can hint where all of the answers are um, for review questions and things like that with and I just I won't even know that they're looking right on their paper to tell me the answer. I would rather have them digging and finding because it creates a lot of enthusiasm. And that way it equals the playing field and first year students can like fire away the answers as well. So students need to bring to class their student binder and they need to bring their student guide of their writing research library in a book, right? That's what that is. And then they need to bring, we like to put mastery charts, which are all of the charts of the year in one binder. You can either put them in the back of the student binder so they just have the one binder or split them between the student binder and the, ma the mastery charts binder. But I really, I like the trivium tables but I particularly like having all of the charts in one book because I am constantly talking the charts, talking about the charts. And let me just tell you something about the charts before we get going. I tell the kids all the time, chart A, that is like one ring to rule all the other rings or the mothership, or um, if you were getting to know a person, that's the overview of getting to know them. But if you really wanted to get to know them, like what their favorite ice cream is, and um, what their interests are, maybe their favorite book, you have to get to know them in other ways. So chart A is an overview, and then the whole rest of the year, we are constantly going back to chart A, because we're getting to know the other places. Um, this past week, I used the analogy of going to Europe. And I said, if we were going to, you knew you were going to Europe, you have planned your places and you're really excited about it, but you don't really know it. You just kind of look at the overview of your trip. That's what chart A is. But then you land the plane. And in our case, one week we're going to land in noun world. And we're going to travel around and get to know the land of noun. And then another week, we're going to land the plane in the world of verbs. And that whole world is going to come alive, and it's always still going to point back to chart A. So in another video, I'm going to touch on some of the chart memory, and I'll bring Sadie in on that too. But um, I like to put that at home, and I put this on the board so the parents have a reminder, that this resource that CC has provided for us is full of so much more than we will ever have time to use in the classroom. So there's punctuation and capitalization. There's 17 weeks worth of rules for that that you can practice in your editing and in your writing. And so I like to put on the board 
what rule we're on for punctuation and capitalization and for spelling so that they know they have that reminder to look that up in their stuff at home. I can't tell you how many people third year have said, oh, we have that in there? I never even knew. And it kind of breaks my heart because there is such a wealth of great content in here. I hate for people to not know that it's there. So we try our best to know that it's there and pull it out. And then on the other side for the writing, I don't know if you can see it very well from where you are, but in the TWSS book, which is Teaching with Structures and Style, that's the Andrew Pudua book, okay? That's where, in class, I have the moms pull his guide out, and we go through units one and two, and they can skim the pages while I'm explaining how keyword outline happens, or how, and like this week, we use the fox and the grapes to start out thinking about the keyword outline because it's really short, and then we moved into the ancient history, right? So that way the kids and the parents get a refresher or an introduction to those units. And then HBWL is history-based writing lesson. That is that history-based book with pyramid on it. So for that, um, we covered lessons one and two. And it is fast and furious. Classes are fast, right? So we covered as much as we could, but I like to say I announce page numbers on a constant basis. I say parents, look at page 14 right now, and I wait for them to find it. And then I'll say, do this at home. And I'll reference, you know, we're not going to cover this brainstorming section now because we want you to cover it at home. But do you have any questions? Here's how it works. Um, and then the LY adverbs was our stylistic technique number one that we introduced on week one. And so kids know, above anything else, they can throw an LY word in there. So what's an LY word? Well, we go to the student binder which comes actually from the student resource packet that's provided in here. If you go to this blue page, you get your free download, right? There's also a free IEW app. We use that all the time. It's a great thesaurus for kids. So they can look up LY words. They can see the stylistic techniques. And they can get some great ideas for adding stylistic words. Now, underneath, I do list the vocabulary in green. And we do not cover these in class. We just fire out, hey, does anyone know what radiant means? Hey, does anyone know what fashion means? But the reason why I put it there is because I like to remind all of the families that words all are of a certain part of speech. And so with the grammar, you may use them differently, like a subject and a direct object and a verb. Parts of speeches, though, um, like a direct object, is going to be a noun or a pronoun. So in this, I like to reinforce parts of speech, and I like to say, play with the vocabulary at home. And if you have a paper and you've underlined or highlighted your green vocabulary word, add, an, add a star next to it if you changed it up a little bit. Maybe instead of using radiant, they used radiantly. Or monumental instead of monument. Or majestically. Or magistrate <laughs> or um, en enigma could turn into enigmatic. I like for people to know that those vocabulary words aren't stuck in that form. Play with them. Work on your vernacular. Give yourself some words of the week at home to see if you can challenge yourselves to use. So that is a basic overview. This is great material. And just last thing, there's a free download here with a checklist for your whole year. You might want to look at it. It's all on one page. There's a lot of great checklists available on CC Connected, but I found having it at a glance and then taking reminders from what we do in class and what they can do at home and having little abbreviations so that everyone knows it's there and then giving it a, a time, a minimum time frame, is going to be so helpful and your students will be motivated to check those boxes and you can do as much or as little as you can. We try to tailor that for first year as well as third tour, or in my daughter's case, fourth year. So um, come back on. I'm going to give you some chart A tips in a second with my daughter. But I organize all of my weeks with tabs. And then in the back of my parent book, that's where I have a set of charts for me. And I have the spelling lists and the punctuation, capitalization areas tabbed so that I remember where they are. Then I pulled out all of the editing exercises and put it in a separate folder. And let me just tell you, for editing, 
stick to what we're working on here. These scripture passages are long. They're very hard. But if you just take one verse out of it and say, hey, what is the, what is the um, capitalization rule this week? Every sentence begins with a capital letter. Let's make sure that's in there. Put all capital letters in. Make sure every sentence ends with punctuation and be done with it. Okay? So there are great ways to scale the editing lessons um, so that you will use them. I also pulled out all of the sentence diagramming pages and put them in their own binder. This is gold. This, I tell people, is like you're doing a science experiment with words. You're dissecting and taking all of these parts of speech and you're going to play with them, look at what they are, put them back in order. Okay, this is great. Don't neglect your diagramming because this is going to prepare these students to be great writers, to recognize great writing, and even to learn Latin. So don't forget that. And then just for some fun at-home things, I bought a, a homophone curriculum that I really liked. It's all about homophones. And I printed it and put it in a binder. Sadie and I like to use those. They're fun. They're something she can do on her own. And um, I think that's it, folks. I know it's a lot, but I will say one last thing. The Essentials program is awesome. And if you do foundations and you do essentials, you really don't need much else in your home in these formative years other than a math program. It really covers a lot of ground. So I want to make sure parents know what they have because otherwise they're going to buy a program for this and a program for that and a program for this and they're going to feel like they're wasting a lot of money and then they don't know what to do with everything. So if you simplify and streamline and see the wealth of what you have and we encourage each other, how are you using it and reinforce it in the classroom each week, it's a win. So enjoy your essentials program. I hope that helps you with your kickoff. Thank you.